So what goes on for especially small and medium distributor, and I'll go on, you know, I'll give you a little uh, insight on what goes on Southern Republic of the world as well. So what really goes on is Friday is the day where they do their tastings or evaluate new products, right? So how does a Friday look and why it's Friday? So Monday to Thursday, the reps are out there selling. And most of this small and medium distributors, let's say they have like 10, 15 reps, right? So they're done with their, their Monday to Thursday work. And then on Friday, they all come to the office for, you know, getting new samples for next week for uh, getting some invoices, which accounts wants them to chase up because some retailers are maybe not paying on time. So they, they are the ones who are gonna go and collect the checks as well, just so you know, they're just not selling wines. You know, they're collecting money as well for a lot of small and medium distributors. So that's what they do as well. They are helping in the warehouse as well. You know, they're, they're just checking out what's going on. They're checking out that their, their hot sale products have inventory because it's in their best interest. And that's really what goes on in a small and medium distribution distributors that they also you know go and check out the warehouse say hello to people and whatnot then around 10 to 11 o'clock let's say in the morning uh, usually is when they discuss they have a meeting and then they discuss uh, you know various things one of the things is new brands they may have a supplier meeting as well where a supplier is coming in and wants to do a market work or inter is introducing a brand and you know the sales reps are being introduced about that new brand so uh back on evaluation of a brand this is how it really goes on you know someone um, walks into the warehouse gets the samples you know puts the samples they open a bottle they all have wine glasses for example you know or spirits uh, glasses but they open a bottle basically right and then they're just pouring and having a good time so the the tone of and uh, the feel of that meeting you have to understand is not super formal you know they're they're doing their meetings as well they're gathering as well and at the same time they are evaluating new products and this is after, after obviously the pre-evaluations are done, you know, from the buyer or from the portfolio manager or from whoever, right? But this is this is the level two where they have to, the portfolio manager is sort of uh, pre-selling the sales rep that, hey, I have your interest here. Do I have your vote here? Or even the owner is there and so on. But the first thing is done already, you know, that the pricing and the need analysis and all that. So let's imagine that they need this product, there is a gap and all that soft parts are taken care of. It's a good pricing and everything is taken care of. This is just, this is to explain you, you know, how a decision is made, how the ultimate yes or no is made. So the wine is being poured, you know, they're, they're judging the wine and I mean, they're evaluating the wine and everyone's having their view. Uh, what they're really, really evaluating is product. And then let's say they love the product, but then they're, they're asking this kind of questions, right? So, okay, what's the price? So at that time, at that particular time, what you really want to do is have the pricing handy. And that's why I really encourage all the suppliers to put a pricing letter. One letter is saying, hey, hey, thanks. This is, you know, uh, to this is handy when you open a box. So in that letter, you write your pricing and pricing should be, I encourage pricing to be line priced. So if you're selling, you know, five varietals like Merlot, Chardonnay, Shiraz, uh, please do not have, different prices you know you should make more money somewhere and make less money some somewhere else but have a line price item so keep 7.99 for example cost to the retail keep you know uh 4.99 or 3.99 cost to distributor so keep line pricing super super important this is one of the biggest reasons uh why brands get a no which they don't know but this is a decision was made uh, that they can't have this brand because of this weird pricing. I'm just not going to put in the work. So literally, you know, by creating this extra friction, you are eliminating uh, your chance to being in the portfolio for distributor. So I would encourage that. And that same goes with the supply chain. Even retailer doesn't like to be displaying their four varietals, you know, at different prices. You know, that, that creates confusion in front of the consumers as well, to be honest. So line pricing is one thing which they look at. They look at uh, X works or FOB and so on, right? So what you really want to do is again be very, very convenient and give them the price till their warehouse. What they don't want again to get involved in the logistics of uh, getting your pallet, you know. So I again would encourage uh, you take care of the shipping if you're a supplier and give them the price till the warehouse and you manage uh, the shipping because that time and that service has a value. So pay attention to giving them price till their door. 
and obviously you've got to add that price but they can you know do give that option and you can always say we also have you know x uh, works if you're working with big uh, warehouses like third party logistics like western carriers or let's say napa where you have third party logistics uh, for sure then x x works uh, is better sometimes because they already are buying from multiple suppliers from that warehouse and here's one more important thing to know for example if you if you know if you if you know something a little bit about us business especially the east coast there is a warehouse called best and carriers pretty much like 50% of the brands store there if they're using you know uh, uh, the model of uh, msw or box street or things like that but you should know that in their portfolio which are the brands that they're picking up from this warehouse and you should try to be in that warehouse because that is also a decision maker believe it or not right so you you giving them an option of one more warehouse is a friction what you really want to do is go to where they already are buying where their trucks are coming every week that is a big one guys so you know you will get repeat orders just like in in a small batches like because they're already picking up a pallet from other suppliers and they're going to add your two layers of your wine to make up their pallet so this kind of things is very important to understand so i'll repeat i'll make it clear for you so try and see where the warehouse uh, they are already buying some of their portfolio brands you know from and try to work with that warehouse if not try to uh, deliver for them till their door so that that's what i would encourage because that is a decision being discussed as well in their meeting the last one is uh, you should tell them uh, how aggressively you know the trade like shelf talkers case cards and all that so you should put that in your sample box you should display that you should encourage them to discuss that heavy and you should have a little programming sheet completely like a launch uh, programming sheet which not many people do but you should have a first six months programming sheet what i mean by that is you know in your first month a launch deal is uh, buy three cases and get one case free i'm just making up numbers here but obviously you got to do your economics buy five cases and get one case buy you know one case and get a bottle uh, you know uh, no minimum buys for new accounts can be one bottle for a restaurant they can start can be one case for a retailer they can start get the best deal of a 10 case so have your programming have sales incentives that you know put uh, my brand in 80 accounts in the first 30 days and uh, whoever does 80 accounts gets a $500 visa card so design your programming to kick off a brand in the first three months and then design your programming that is uh, used for depletions from the trade right so you got to focus on in store tastings you got to focus on incentives for the the reps out there in the retail because that's what you, your next phase is after the first like 30 days you got to focus on depletions and then the and then i would say have an annual sort of a depletion or an incentive or a programming where christmas deal is there or an annual uh, number is there where if you sell 200 cases of my wine you you get you know 1000 dollars kickback and so on so that programming is very important because that is a sheet which usually like 20% of the times maybe owner is not even sharing uh, with the distributors uh, reps you know to be honest it is it is where the profit is it's it's you know if if you if you know some states have like rip which is called uh, i mean which are, which are like incentives for the retail owners where if they if they buy this minimum quantity they get uh, that uh, you know uh, check mailed to them so this is something which goes as a complete profit contributor and which usually owners see that as a net margin that's it that's the only way sort of they know that that's a guaranteed margin i'm making on this deal so something like that right so you should have a, a annual or a six quarter or something which is just for the owner right just design something which is just purely for the owner which only an owner knows or maybe a decision maker knows that okay i have this extra margin to play uh so imagine that uh, you know the, the the portfolio managers or the reps are already excited for this pricing now what you you know owner knows that they are happy with this pricing and then you're giving owner extra 5% you know uh, as a kickback if they perform well annually right so have that sort of programming so i think that that's that's the tip which i really want to do and one of the favorite ones i would say is have extra bottles of samples because here's what happens once they're done with this once they know you know the they, they always make a half half uh, as decision like all right i think this looks good you know this looks let, let's think about it let's you know let's let's see how we go let's see and blah 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 right so they've they've not made a 100% yes that let's add it send the guy a purchase order and get them started right 
So in this meeting, they've made a 90% decision. Now it's up to you as a supplier. What you have to do is call the person on Monday. Hey, John, how was your meeting? You know, uh, did everyone like it? What can I do to make sure I can still, you know, uh, convince your team that this is a good partnership? Something like that. So that, that Monday follow-up call is very important. You need to call because you need to know when they're going to taste your products. If it was Friday, you need to really call on Monday itself showing how did it go. Two things, keep extra samples uh, in your sample boxes because maybe the owner, John, may say that, hey, I have uh, still one person left to taste, right? So they're going to open up a new bottle. Or maybe the owner wants to revisit this whole thing himself again. Maybe a couple of people wants to retaste it. Or maybe the, a sales rep wants to take it out to their key accounts for pre-sale and get a pre-commitment or show it to their account. So that extra bottles which you have shipped are going to be used in many, many ways. They're going to be taken out in the market for distributors to pre-sell. They're going to be uh, used for re-evaluations. And they're going to be, I think the best thing, which I, I think uh, I liked it because I think I, I was hacking this behavior because I sold wine as well and I bought wine as well as a wholesaler, which I noticed is send an extra sample with the mentality that it's just sitting in the warehouse. The more they see your product, uh, and they still haven't made a decision, they're going to keep thinking, oh, I still have to think about this guy. I still have to make a decision. So make sure that your product is just sitting there in sample form and, and that you always have an excuse to use, you know, uh, to approach them. Hey, have you, have you sent, shall I send you more samples? So try not to be stingy there. Uh, there are many, many reasons on how uh, samples are being used, you know, by distributors, which most of the people sometimes don't know, you know. And one of the big reasons is uh, pre-sale or second is even giving away, to be honest, in, in their key accounts um, because they are waiting for some decisions as well there. And even, uh, you know, some things like maybe a rep just wants to take home on Friday and, and drink that wine or whatever spirit you've given, right? And show it to their friends or some other, you know, key people, which they just mingle with. But all that is part of the decision making, you know, uh, in the following week. And after your Monday call, what you really want to do is on Friday, go for the hook and say, hey, I'm really, really excited. And I would really appreciate if you can just let me know a clear yes or no sort of thing. Because you know that you've put in all the work and then you you being strict about a decision is a good thing because they know that you mean business and you've shown it, you know, by your actions, with samples, by materials, by programming, by everything. You've shown it that you are a business person. So you asking for a business uh, after like a week or two is fine. So I think that that is a good idea uh, to give you a context on what really goes on and evaluation of your samples when it goes to the distributors uh, warehouses. So hope this helps. All the best.